Hello, Aries person. Let me turn down the music in my ear. I always want to read with music on, but then I'd get like copyright strikes. But anywho, so this is a random reading I'm doing, but not so random, but kind of random. <laughs> because, uh, I don't know, earlier today, like, I bought these cards with the intention to use them on my channel, but I just never did. You know what I mean? But I don't know, earlier today I was like, I want to do a reading with these, so um, I used it on my friends first, <laughs> because I just made up a spread, and I did it with um, my friends first, and it worked really well. So, <laughs> it's a life purpose um, reading with Doreen Virtue's uh, Life Purpose Oracle deck. And Aries is first, not because it was intentional, but because I wanted to make it fair, because I usually do all of the readings based on like the highest views, but since I've never done this before, I couldn't do that. So I use my little uh, dice of residence, and the two people that got chosen were Aries and Capricorn. So Aries is first, and then after you guys, I'm going to do Capricorn, not in the same video, because, you know, I'm going to take care of upload. But anywho... My intention with this is just to give um, those of you guys out there who are struggling with, um, you know, career path or soul mission, things of the sort, just to kind of give you guys some insight of what direction you're going to go. And then I'm going to give you guys additional insight from the Worth Your Light deck. You know what I'm saying? So, Spirit, please give us clear and direct guidance for Aries in reference to their life purpose. Please, Spirit, any insight that can be given to them to help them in their search for their life purpose or soul mission, please, Spirit. I'll find you on the line. I'm just going to share with you guys the music I'm listening to right now. Of course you know I'm listening to Radiohead. I'm so sorry, Incubus. I've been cheating. I'm listening to Daydreaming, which is a song that uh, had some relevance to Capricorn this month. Just if you want some good music in your life. So anyway, the first card we have is Leadership. I should probably show them to you, huh? <laughs> leadership. Then we have Sensitivity. Then we have Books. Then we have strength. It's a thing Aries has on lock. Oracle cards. And healer. So with our leadership card. Move all this stuff out of the way. So with the leadership card, it says take charge of this situation. Sensitivity card says you're becoming more sensitive and need to make changes accordingly. The books card says you connect to your life purpose through your involvement with books. Strength says everything you've experienced in your life has made you strong and courageous. The oracle card says you are able to discern answers and guidance for yourself and others. And healer says you have the spiritual gift of healing and a desire to share it with others. So the thing that I'm getting is here is that, of course, the position that you guys are being called into is one of leadership. So whether that's leading people, whether it's like a soul group of people that you'll be leading, whether it's, um, wow, that looks like Joan of Arc. That is Joan of Arc. Wow, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> I have a very weird connection with Joan of Arc. And that was my confirmation name. I grew up Catholic. So my name is technically like Princess India, Joan of Arc. It's a long story. But anywho, so wow, noticing that this is Joan of Arc, this is like way more. Leadership in the sense of like being a solo leader, which is another thing that I'm pretty sure that Aries is a keen to. But it's like leadership in the sense of um, whatever it is that you guys are being led to do, it's going to require a level of strength and courage because you're being called to do something that is completely out of the ordinary and something that is going to require you to, to trust solely in spirit because... Um, how can I put it? It's almost like you you feel it in your gut, right? But, um, and I guess the best way to put it is it sounds crazy. 
It sounds crazy. And I say Joan of Arc is a really good reference for that and the fact that um, she was, a, like, during the time that she lived, it's like she's a girl <laughs> who hears a disembodied voice that's, like, lit literally telling her um, to aid in the proper crowning of... Uh, the the dofa in france you know what i mean so if you think about all of the odds that were against her in the sense that at the time it's like women didn't do stuff like that or the fact that she dressed as a guy you know what i mean in order to get the mission done and people called her a heretic and she was eventually burned at the stake for it not saying that you'll be burned at the stake <laughs> But it's just the fact that it requires a lot of courage and strength. And the thing that I'm seeing with this and the strength card is the fact that um, it's clearly related to, and I say this for everyone with your life purpose, and uh, my dad says this a lot. I always quote my dad or my granny, I swear. Uh, wait. Where your misery, wait, wherever your misery is, there lies your ministry. And the, the whole basis of that lies in the fact that whatever hard thing or wound that you had that you've overcome in your life, how you overcame that exists as like a blueprint to help another person come out of it, right? And usually when there's problems a person has been through where it's something that either people don't talk about on a regular basis or because um, the thing that I'm thinking about, and this is very some people could say morbid, but I'm just going to say what I feel led to say. Okay, so being a counselor, and just, this is a forewarning, tread lightly with what I'm saying, but this is just what came to my mind. So, um, like, okay, me being a counselor, of course, you know, there's uh, scholarly journals of different forms of, um, you know, issues or diagnoses or whatever that people deal with that are researched um, by different therapists around the country, around the world, right? But there's one particular one, I'm not going to say one particular, but there's several areas that are very, um, that aren't researched heavily. And it's mostly because not a lot of people are willing to, um, I need to pause that. <laughs> it's mostly because a lot of people aren't willing to come forward and, um, you know, be a part of a case study. You know what I mean? So, and the thing that came to my mind was like, um, incest sexual abuse, right? There's a lot of research on like father daughter sexual abuse, but there's not a lot of research on like sibling sexual abuse, right? Because a lot of people feel ashamed to come forward about it or it happens to them and they kind of push it to the side type of deal. So, um, and I say that to say that it's kind of something within those lines. It's like, it's something that you've been through, that there's other people in the world that are struggling with this, and there's not a lot of research on it. There's not a lot of people talking about it. You know what I mean? So because there isn't a lot of research or a lot of people aren't talking about it, this is something that you've had to like figure out or overcome on your own. So you've had to do a ton of research and Googling things and reading different articles and watching different documentaries and stuff about it to where um, you've gotten kind of a handle on it to where you've learned how to cope to come out of it. You know what I mean? And it doesn't necessarily have to be in the depth of, of sexual abuse, but um, that's just what popped into my head. But the thing is, is that spirit gave you the spiritual gift of strength for you to be able to along with your good old you know airy zodiac sign <laughs> to have the strength to like overcome this alone and you're supposed to be like a pioneer to or a trailblazer in a sense to help other people to do what you did to get out of whatever it is that you overcame and then i also see there's like a level of um of therapy in this and not necessarily saying that you have to be a therapist i mean you could be a coach or something but because you guys are an empath so people could come to you and tell you what their problems are and just as they're talking to you instantly click and it's like you tune into that energy that they're vibrating at and you can kind of speak from the real in a sense to get to the root of their problem. And another way to help you do this, a tool that you can use is Oracle cards. So I'm seeing this as like two of your biggest um, 
tools to be able to connect with people are going to be oracle cards or tarot cards and your gift of um your empath gift you know what i'm sure and then also what i'm seeing is um wow well that kind of explains what i just explained <laughs> because i'm looking at the books card and uh how i was saying how you guys did like a lot of research it's like you guys doing all of this research this is where i'm seeing where this book card is coming in it's like a lot of the stuff that you have because i kind of almost see like a person and not necessarily saying that you do this but the vision that i have is like somebody who's like in a library and it's like dark and they're like sitting at a table under the little lamp you know what i'm saying and they're just like looking through books constantly that's kind of the vibe that I get, but all of this is because you are a healer. And I'm saying this, like, I want to stress this, like, you don't necessarily, like, I mean, if you're thinking about going to school, then by all means do it. But I feel the need to say that don't feel discouraged thinking, like how I said, like, you know, being like a therapist, counselor type of deal. Don't necessarily feel that you have to go, um, you know, get, um, a degree unless you feel led to do so because I feel like whatever this thing is this unique thing that you guys have been through um that you're gonna help people with I mean of course getting proper training I mean I, I, I would never tell you <laughs> let me get that straight don't go try counseling people now <laughs> don't do that <laughs> don't call yourself a counselor you know what I'm saying or a psychologist or something of the sort if you don't have those credentials but there's nothing wrong with doing, like, um, a girl that I met, she does something I didn't even know existed. Um, what is it called? I think it's peer, peer mentorship or something of the sort. And, like, she runs, um, she runs support groups. She runs, like, mental health support groups. So it's not her taking on the role of, um, like a therapeutic group to where you know she's given solutions or or interventions or things of the sort it's like she's just like you know an equal to everyone that's there and um you know just kind of it's speaking from her own experience so the thing that makes her a master or makes her an expert is the fact that she's been through what everyone is going through and the thing that qualifies her is her experience you see what i mean but, um, yeah, just don't be misusing terms or things, but I don't think Aries would do that, but I'm just saying. <laughs> but, um, but I'm saying don't feel discouraged in a sense because one thing I always stress with people is that your life purpose, your calling, and your gifts, it has absolutely nothing to do with, um, with degrees and whatnot. You know what I mean? It's like, especially it's like if you, and I, I was talking to one of my clients about this the other day. It's like, um, the degree isn't what qualifies you, you know what I mean? It's like, of course, granted, legally, you need those credentials and whatnot in order to practice if you're doing something like optometry or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, or therapy or uh, law, like, just because to make sure that, you know, you're, you're seeing the proper credentialed licensed professionals is the reason why we have to go through all of those hoops and whatnot. And, um, you know, so, but it's like getting all of that isn't what makes you qualified to do it. It makes you qualified to practice, but it, it's not what gives you the gift to do it, if that makes sense. So if you feel um, led to go to something where you do need credentialing for it, then by all means. But I mean, you know, you don't have to go get like, you know, a PhD <laughs> to, um, to help people, you know? You can always find different ways to help people in the meantime, even if it's, if it's life coaching, it's being a shaman, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to get some additional guidance for you guys. But so far, I feel like this is more or less like a confirmation reading for somebody. <laughs> and and I the vibe that I get with this is literally that it's something like... Um, like this is something that you do in your spare time and you, it's you're you're considering it like a like a private obsession or something but you don't think that anything could really come of it 
And I think this is kind of com confirmation for you that, like, you're seriously on to something. So keep up with the dag nabbit son of a gun, I said. So the two work your light cards that we have. The first one is Keepers of the Earth. You are not alone. Ancient ancestors stand beside you. Absolutely. So the thing that I feel is um, you guys are being guided. So this is almost like I feel this is a, a past loved one's unfinished business. So I feel like somewhere in your family, they had a person who, uh, and I feel like it's a lady. It's an older lady. And uh, so this might be like a grandmother or something, like a grandmother, maybe a great grandmother, because the vibe that I get is like during her time, like um, she couldn't step out and do something like that because, you know, being a woman at that time, you can't just be trying to jump shot and be like, oh, so, hey, I have this really great idea that I want to, you know, do research in. <laughs> so I kind of feel like it's a grandmother and it's like, whatever it is that you're doing, it's like you're finishing um, her work and it's like, and she's guiding you in this. So kind of as you're doing this research and you're looking through things or these little inklings that you get to go look something up, I feel like it's a, a lot of her behind you, like pushing you to, uh, to do this. And um, the next card that you have is the ever unfolding rose cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. Ah, one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. <laughs> That's one of the quotes that I always use on people. <laughs> Each and every one of my clients will tell you that. I'll get really, really quiet and I'm, I just sit back and I look and I'm like, do you feel like life is happening for you or do you feel like life is happening to you? Because how you answer that is is very, very telling. Um, and that's what I feel like with this strength and this leadership and kind of how I was saying, like everything that you've been through has kind of like prepared you in every sense of the word. Never, ever forget that life is happening for you. Every single thing that you've been through, no matter how crappy it is, it has been preparing you to trailblaze whatever this is that you guys are doing. So that's all I got, guys. <laughs> <laughs> let me know if this resonates and let me know in the comments because I want to know what super cool trailblazing stuff you Aries are doing, Dagnabbit son of a gun. But let me know what you guys think of this reading. I love your face and I will see you sooner than later, Dagnabbit. <laughs> Deuces. Wait, I should probably put up the fingers, huh? <laughs>